Hi everyone and welcome to On The Couch with Scorpion Raceway. Uh, today we have a special guest in Anthony Sneedon. Welcome. Thanks much and uh, good day to everyone out there in Scorpion Land. Now, first up, I don't know you as Anthony. I only know you as Crashy. Okay. So, where does that actually come from first? Okay, the uh, nickname of Crashy uh, stands back to my days in Fender Benders where I was the notorious Constable Crash where uh, everyone used to like to spin me out and the best part about that is you'd hear all the kids cheering that you got spun and to hit him again. So <laughs> from Constable Crash, it's just basically been shortened down to Crashy and I've been known as that since. But a little bit of trivia for uh, the Fender Bender fans and Speedway fans. I was actually the second Constable Crash. Uh, the original guy that uh, was doing Constable Crash stopped racing and uh, I thought, well, the kids loved Constable Crash. Why not keep him out there? Oh, so there's a bit of history in the making where Crashy's name came from. I will give everyone just a, a, a local, just a background of what of, of you. Well, um, I'm just over 40. Uh, just? Just. Okay, not a problem. Just over 40. Uh, got a lovely girlfriend, uh, Michelle. Um, I live down at Campbelltown in New South Wales here. Uh, other than that, uh, not much to me. All right. Let's talk about Anthony Crashy. What type? What what jobs have you been doing recently? Because I know you you you're a photographer. That's why we've got you on here because it's a different thing that we don't talk about a lot. But you also do radio DJ. Yep. You. What else do you do? <laughs> There's so many things. I I try to try my best to do a little bit of everything. I um like to try and design my own stuff uh, which we've probably seen on a few of the uh, shirts that I've worn uh, I like to try and dabble in uh, designing race cars with different ideas and if I can't figure it out I just send it over to you and say this is the idea I've had let's work on it um, but yeah I've been doing community radio which is uh, not like your mainstream radio it's more volunteer it's a bit of fun I've been doing that since 1997 uh, I used to do a speedway show down there at MacArthur Radio in Campbelltown. That was quite fun, especially when you had a few of the Fender Bender boys in, uh, and you knew that a few of them liked to drop the F-bomb. <laughs> so you deliberately ask them a tricky question, and it was always a pleasure to see them squirm without trying to swear on radio. God's sake. All right, well, you've pointed out that you started uh, did fender meters was that your start of your racing uh, originally I did a demolition derby and uh, that was interesting in its own right because the uh, guys at Campbelltown spares back in the day it, uh, I said to them look I want to do a demolition derby so I can raise money for the children's ward at the hospital so they gave me an old Ford Falcon I think it was an XC I'm not up on me Fords and we parked it in the middle of uh, Queen Street in Campbelltown and for a dollar you got to write your name on the car and everyone got in behind it I think we raised about two thousand dollars back wow. in the day and after I'd finished the derby I'm like boy that was fun let's go wreck something else and I'm like hang on I can't wreck the car it's already buggered then through uh, a few friends they said there's a fender bender for sale and that was it, I was That's gone. Where it started. All right, let's move from the fender benders to what you do now. How long have you been actually a photographer? Well, I'll rephrase that. How long have you been taking photos for at the track? Uh, I started about two thousand and eight. I had a very small camera. At, uh, you wouldn't think it would take a decent photo, but for its size, it actually did quite well. But I could only shoot during the daylight hours. Because it wasn't strong enough, so to speak, to have the capabilities to do night shots. Um, but I've also been a official uh, Valvoline Raceway track photographer now for about four, five seasons now. So how long have you actually been photographing at Valvoline? Well, mm. Parramatta, with all the different we names. We could probably been... say at least 10 plus years. So 10 years. So five outside, five inside. Yeah. Okay. Some of your biggest moments when taking photos, what would be like your favourite photo? I know that would be hard. 
one that comes to mind that always stands out for me is uh, actually a speed car shot. Uh, Brock Maskovich uh, came over and drove for the uh, American racing team in the Spike chassis car. He was coming through turns three and four, which if you're not sure of Parramatta, that's a pit end. And I just noticed him, he was hitting this one spot and the wheel was slowly coming up. So the left front, and I'm thinking, he's going to hit it the wrong way. And I'm going to be on this. And sure enough, he next lap, he's hit it and the car's reared up onto its right rear. I got the shot. Uh, one of the other track photographers, he's just looked at me and I've looked around back at him. I've just had a uh, Cheshire grin on my face. <laughs> and he's like, you got that, didn't you? Yeah. So has he been using that photo? Brock Maskovich has, yeah. Um, oh, sweet. Which is good, but I haven't been, didn't get any merch out of it, which is a bit of a bugger. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that'd be up there, like, uh, that'd be a close one between that one and a, uh, I've actually got a picture of a legend car splitting down the middle. As Wouldn't happen split. to be a white legend car, would it? That's the guy. Ah, <laughs> Now, obviously, we've seen Hayden the other week when we spoke to him, and that's his go, I bet you. Oh, yeah, the number three. Yeah, that's him. Yeah. Well, there you go. And, and but, sir, we didn't mention his name at first. No, well, I knew who it was as soon as you said it split down the middle. I remember seeing that. Um, when people say, oh, they go out to the speed and they take photos, how many photos do you take in a meeting? Okay, if we do an average meeting... There's no average thing as an average meeting of our main race. They're all excellent. But um, on a standard show, we will, oh, well, me personally, I'll take anywhere up to sometimes 900. Some, sometimes, a, which is a rare occasion, I'll go over a 1,000. Out of that amount of uh, photos, I can guarantee I'd only be happy with about 200 of them. Okay. So it's very hit and miss. Um, like, you might be focusing on, say, we'll use KBL in the 72 sprint car. Yep. I might see, start focusing on him on the back straight, and I'm thinking, okay, he's probably going to go the low line again as he did last lap. And by the time you've looked, he's moved up a bit to the high line, and you might miss part of the wing. So you'll take another shot. Yep. So it's not just snap, 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 snap. It's you're setting up from way halfway down the straight before we come through the corner yeah um, a lot of people think what a photographer will do is just sit there and put it on hold their finger on the shutter button and go and the way I've explained it to a lot of people and this is something people can try at home um, look at next time you look at a road sign or something just look at it and look how clear it is but when you do stop and pretend your eyes are those shutters on your camera and just start blinking really quick Watch how out of focus it goes. Okay. And that's where I say to people, your camera is much like what you see through your eyes. So if you blink too much and it goes blurry, you're going to get blurred photos. Okay. Just well, that's something to learn. Hmm. What would be a career highlight at Valvoline for you? Like, you take photos and you said you've seen that of match bit. What would be another career highlight for you in photography? Um, photography wise a lot of them are just the uh, like where you see the happiness in somebody's face uh, whether or not that's their first feature win or they've won a lot of feature uh, features um, and like when they're having fun like pink night's great because yeah. sometimes they'll have that pink wig up on their head and it just makes them out everyone's having fun um, another fun part is like when they're up on the podium my uh, good mate the late Chris Chappie uh, I knew his wife Sue would uh, have a few words to say about it and which was great for Chris and I because we love stirring Sue up and uh, I've got to say good day to Sue because uh, she's going through a rough trot so uh, much love Sue um, but I got the two trophy girls that, and they one of them actually kissed him I said just make out you kissed him one of them's playing a kiss them. and Chris has got this huge smile and for me that's not only is it a great moment, but it's also one of my memories that I still have fondly of Chris. That's one of the stickers that we, we made up. Yes. I remember that one. Yes. Well, in saying that, now you've been around Speedway a lot. You've seen accidents. What would be something that's probably not your most favourite memory, but it's a memory because 
of Speedway. Uh, I was there the night Kerry Madsen went through the fence there in turn one. That was uh, a bit of a wake-up call for Speedway in general. Um, just knowing that a sprint truck would go through the fence. And at the time, Dave Lander, I think, was the promoter. And he, him and I think it was Steve Green, they upgraded the safety fence just for the safety of the spectators. Uh, but... When it comes to safety at Parramatta, not only is it a case that you've got to have the right race gear and you know, we've got a bunch of guys there that look after you no matter what. Even even me as a photographer on the infield, they're keeping an eye, like a close eye on me. Um, and that's our crash crew. and oh, yeah. they're, they're, they're a wonderful bunch of blokes. Frank and the guys, Dutchy and all the boys. Uh, and Alan. Alan. I still can't believe how fast Alan runs after all these years. But well, they, they run to the accident where we're running away from stuff. So you've got to give a kudos to the guys at the Valvoline uh, race with the crash crew. Absolutely awesome guys. They mm -hmm. really are. And they're volunteers, which yes. is even more amazing. It is. Now, let's talk about some of your gear that you wear, you've worn over the last few years. Oh, yes. There's, uh, uh, we've had a few shirts that uh, both you and I have put it in together uh, designs um i had a, a basically a red and black one uh which we started off with that got a lot of attention uh the current shirt i'm wearing this is sort of like the version three it's got motley on the back yes but i think the most infamous one that uh i've had is the uh bright yellow one yeah which has <laughs> the uh smoking duck yes the smoking duck and uh, that's got a few choice words on it. But it does. <laughs> now the thing is, each one of your shirts, you, you don't, you, well, you have on your sleeve a different, um, like t this one's here's yeah. autism, yeah. and you've had DB in another one, so you actually also putting a bit of support towards charities and everything like that. So which is really good. And it's not just about your shirt; it's about helping other people as well. Well, if we use this one here with the autism, uh, a lot of people probably wouldn't know what Asperger's is, which is a form of autism. And I actually have Asperger's, which is kind of a good thing for me because I remember stuff that I should really be forgetting. <laughs> and, um, like, recently there's a lot of stuff uh, which I could forget, but everyone keeps um, reminding me of it. Or even just a photo can just help you rem remember a certain part of your life, and that's one of the other great things about photography. Yes, it is. Now... You have this fascination with trains. Yeah. Uh, Where does that come from? Well, again, that you could probably say it's an autistic trait. Uh, a lot of boys like trains. and uh, But for me, I grew up in a railway family. Uh, my father and my grandfather, my uncles, they all were railway men. And a lot of the topic for the dinner table was railways. If not, it was speedway season. Dad would talk about how John Walsh would just killed all the Yanks at Parramatta or at Liverpool and um, so I've always had a fascination I used to work down at the Royal Museum there at Thilmere so after reading a lot of books I learnt what different locomotives were about and what they would do and uh, a lot of the time you should learn off the older guys down there of how they actually lived like a lot of people, if they went on a steam train trip between, say, Central and Newcastle behind 3801, the guy would actually be shoveling into the firebox at least six tonne of coal. Jeez. Now, when we were actually in Gilgandra, you were up there taking photos. I was up there supporting one of the drivers I do. Mm -hmm. And you actually told me that one of the, the, the actual shop there was actually a railway station. Yeah, uh, one of my favourite tracks. I've got a couple, but uh, G'day to Lou and the guys up there at Gilgandra. Much love, I'll catch up with you <laughs> again. But the railway station at Gilgandra, when the railways had no use for it, the club repurposed it, dragged it from the railway st site, station site, and it's now the uh, Shops, kiosk. kiosk and and that, and yeah. It's got some toilets there for the disabled. And one of the most unusual things is the veranda goes upwards away from the building instead of sloping down. And there was only ever two railway buildings in New South Wales that actually sloped up away from the platform itself. Gilgandra is one of them, 
that's what we see there at the racetrack. Well, see, there you go, a little bit of information. Now, speaking of tracks, and we'll go back to your photography side of things here. What's your favourite track? What's, I wouldn't say favourite track to shoot at, but what's one of the better tracks to really shoot at? What's your most comfortable track to shoot at? Uh, most comfortable one where I can just be me and not worry about anything would be Gilgandra. Yep. Uh, I just feel so at home. They make me feel welcome there all they the time. They really do look after you up yeah. there, don't they? And it's just a great place. Uh, for lighting, um, and it's something that as a photographer and also as a former race driver, you do notice the best track I've come across for that, believe it or not, is Nowra Speedway. Oh, really? Yep. The only downside about the photography side is if you're walking backwards and you're not watching where you're going, you can go down in the creek like Matt Jackson did. Yeah. Sorry, Matt. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you've got to watch out for that. But um, even Valvoline Raceway, on its on a good night, it can produce some wicked results. Uh, you've seen Gary Reid and the others take some excellent shots. Uh, at the start of the season, you might sneak down to turn two of Parramatta and get the sunset. The sunset and, photos. Uh, yeah, just like... Oh, they are, they're very nice, those photos. They really are. Now, let's talk about a little incident that just happened just recently. Oh, yeah. Just if... Someone went for a trip up to Bathurst. You can tell the story from here. Uh, the Bathurst trip. Well, the lovely Michelle, which is my other half and I, and her young son, we went up to Bathurst before all this uh, stuff started. And we, I'd never been around Mount panorama of the race circuit before in my life. I thought it's only a street race thing so we've gone up there and we pulled over I think at the top there where I think it's McPhillamy or something. Yep, McPhillamy Park, yep. And you've got that part where you can pull over to the side yep, and just look before the skyline. Yep. yep. Apparently it's the part where it starts going downhill. And that's sort of like where I went after I decided to jump on a uh, scooter that uh Michelle's young son owned and I thought I'll just roll down a little bit and if I get out of control I'll just fall on the grass. Well I've got up a bit too much speed and I've realised that the grass is now back there and I've put my left foot down to try and stop and next thing I know is I've come to and I'm on the ground and I could just see out of the left eye and trail of blood and I'm like this isn't good. And Michelle was con very concerned for me, um, but thankfully uh, a few people had seen what had happened, and I'm not sure if they were laughing because I was too much, I was in too much pain to take any notice. But a crew from the uh, local council had helped bandage me up and put me into the car, and I was whisked down to uh, Bathurst Space Hospital. Yep. And I'm still a bit too uh, unsure on what happened because they giving me enough drugs, but uh, I ended up uh, fracturing the uh, ball of my hip. And so I now have a metal plate in there with four screws in that way and a 10 centimetre one into the ball of the hip oh. to hold it all together. So you're going to set off um, when you go on planes from here, aren't you? No, actually, this one isn't a um, one of those metals where it can set off magnetic stuff. So oh, really? I'm, I'm kind of cool. Yeah. Oh, OK. It's, it's good to see that you're actually up and about because it, you were down for a, a quite a while which was a pain for me because uh, Michelle will tell you I'm not a very good spectator <laughs> especially when I know all my mates are out on the infield and you can see everything that's happening there and you just really didn't oh like I said I'm just not a good spectator no. but with the season kind of down because of corona what have you been actually doing I know you've been on the recovery as well but uh, what else have you been doing um, getting back to basics, really, with the uh, cameras, um, where I am down there at Campbelltown, it's sort of like you only got to drive 10 minutes and you're out in the bush. And I go to a small wayside part of the railway line, which is great. Um, as soon as the it's got a crossing there, bells come down, you know, a train's coming. I'll get out of the car, I'll take a photo of the train, jump back in the car. That way I'm socialised. Uh, well, I social, uh, isolation. isolation, yeah. So I'm doing that stuff. Uh, I'm getting fresh air, which is great. And 
you always know when you get in, you can uh, get the fresh air because it always smells like cow dung. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the other thing you also know you're in the country when you're hitting less pedestrians. Hayden told me about that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. But no, the, the photos that you've been putting out recently of the of the trains has been really nice. They look, they look really good. It's because of the, the older type of well, not 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 steam trains, but the the diesel, obviously. Mm. But the the older version, they're not the streamlined ones that today that you see. Well, it's got character. Yeah, well, the current ones that I've been putting up on my personal Facebook page, um, they are modern diesels. Um, a lot of people think of the streamlined ones are actually from back in the older 1950s, and they're actually quite fascinating in their own right because hmm. the different noses and they gave more different types yeah. of names. Um, but again, with the railways, it's like you've got the XPT, okay. But back in the day, you'd have like the Central West Express, you had the Melbourne Express. And like, even the, the only named train we have these days is the Indian Pacific, and we yes. all know it goes Sydney to Perth. Yeah. And the railways, unfortunately, in my opinion, just don't really have the marketing ploy right to get people back onto a train. Yeah. All right, let's get back to our speedway. Mm -hmm. With the season gone, new season coming up, what's your expe expectation for the last season at Valvoline? Well, Parramatta, PCR, all the, Power, PCR. Uh, all the names that it's been over the years. Well, I reckon it's going to be a great season. And one thing that I really hope that people do in this off season is start talking up about how great our speedway at Valvoline Raceway Tire Power is. Because you tell one person how great our sport is, they're gonna to wanna to come along. The next person tells. Then you tell the next person. I've been guilty of it where I've had a bad night. Oh, I've got bloody meat pies that were cold. They don't need to know that. You go tell the track, oh yeah, and the guys there will say, okay. Positive. Positive thinking positive talking because what happens then is we get people we fill out oh, that'd be the thing pack it out on the last night like we did with the sydney showground yeah pack it out but those people that have come along and they've really enjoyed our sport when the new place opens they're going to be coming along as well yeah we that need way we can say this is our sport this is our new home yeah this is speedway mm. Yes, we need to get the crowds back. That's one thing we do need. All right, well, we've nearly done our time here today, so mm -hmm. thank you very much for yeah, coming thanks along. Thanks for having me along. Um, what, so what are you going to be, well, before we go, what, what are you going to be doing before we go back to racing? Are you going to be setting up your cameras and doing a lot of cleaning and getting them all ready again? Or are you, you ready to go when it starts? I'm basically ready to go. <laughs> um, and you're the, itching, aren't you? Very much, because uh, after... I had the fall, and I, as I said, I was not a very good spectator. Um, it was basically the week they said, okay, no more racing was the weekend I was actually planning on going back out on oh, the infield. Really? So, yeah, I was not a happy person that day, and um, I think there was a few swear words when I read the note. They were like, why? Just leave the, pe the, leave the spectators. I'll take the photos. They can see what happened then. Uh, now I, I've got to thank you because over the, the last few years you've been donating the photos that of, of the uh, sponsor drivers that I do mm -hmm. so I really appreciate that and no, I'd like to thank you very much for those because that does help me uh, out a lot with the photos and getting some, some great photos from teams so if you're ever out at the Power Matter Speedway Valvoline Raceway Crash is around, say hello to him I know? don't buy it that's not what Melissa said. Because no, Ash, Ash Dawes belts me if I do. Oh, true. If she does on me. <laughs> so, all right then. We'll leave it at that at that point. I think we'll stop it at that one. So, thank you again for coming along tonight and having a bit of a chat to us. It's been really great getting a bit of insight on Crashy. Yeah, the wild, weird world of Crashy. But, uh, yeah, thanks again, Nigel. And uh, thanks for everyone that's uh, tuned in to Scorpion TV. Thank you. All right, guys, that's it for us this time. So, keep an eye out for the next videos that will be happening. And um, we'll see you on the couch.